I had a question, um, Dimitri, which is, I'm, the question is this, we're all surrounded by quite unpleasant and um, uh, unhappy news. Um, and that can be either personal or collective. You know, if you turn on the television or the radio, there's, there's an awful lot about pandemics and death and disaster. And I've now come to um, uh, uh, the, the situation where every time I contact my sisters, they, they say to me, have you got any good news? Um, because I've got friends who have had um, ba bad health scares, severe, Tra traumatic, um, you know, un unpleasant uh, things happening to them, which are um, terminal, and um, and and I've had a few more deaths. And um, my sisters just keep saying, "Well, what good news have you got? Share some good news with us." And of course, we're all stuck in. Well, I'm stuck inside. We're all stuck inside. I'm not doing anything. I'm thinking. Hmm, what good news have I got? And that led me to think in the self-inquiry bit, which I do quite frequently now, to, well, do we need to have good news in order to have a well-being? And then I started thinking, if we're surrounded by this sort of blanket of, of negativity or bad news, does that affect ourselves? And I don't know, um, whether that's important because actually when I now get this bad news, I'm internalizing it in a different way, possibly because of these meetings, because I'm thinking how it affects my feelings and what, what, what's happening with me. And then when I impart that bad news to others, they're hearing it, they're hearing it in a sort of negative way. I just thought that was interesting. Mm. It is interesting. So maybe several aspects to it. So you know, when we first start recognizing ourselves and start to look for what is true, what is not, we start noticing, right, that some actions, some circumstances causes, cause us feel good and some feel, cause us feel bad. And naturally, absolutely naturally, we prefer to feel good than bad. This is how it starts. We start looking for the good and we avoid that which is bad. But in the very run of it, yeah, when we run for the good and avoid the bad, we actually reject the life, we reject the totality. So yeah, you spoke about terminal yeah, conditions and people dying. It's painful. So this is the truth, it's painful. And nothing wrong with it being painful. This is humanly right to be sad and be grieved and nothing wrong with it. It doesn't, it's not bad and it's not good, this is life. And if we are speaking the truth, then this human, yeah, existence is terminal. How can we avoid this? And the very fact of the society currently yeah, is running away from this truth, hiding, closing the eyes on it, speaking about whatsoever, but not about the truth. And the truth is that the life this life as this form is going to end. And it's going to end very soon. What is 70, 80, 90 years? What is this? It's nothing. And you all know this. 
how fast life passing through. And Tedma, you mentioned there is no possibility even to grasp the moment. And when you see that, that every moment is non repeatable, mm -hmm. oh, you say, you start appreciating. You start appreciating every moment. And you also see the, obviously the, that you are not able to hold it. And because if you try to hold it, you start suffering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you let go. You let go of it and you see that this moment is just this moment. And you know to appreciate everything which is passing through this moment because this moment is your very self and you start appreciating life yeah you appreciate every moment of it I because think this have is the, the small things people have really forgotten we're so bombarded with you know news reports of another you know it's tragic so many people are dying and it's yeah. touching, it's touching us now you know people were say, able to say well i don't thankfully covid hasn't affected my family but for most of us it has in some way or shape but i think what do people want when they say good news i mean do they do they want the number of the lottery to say that they've won is that what good news is or is it the fact that we're still here we're still fighting we have a vaccine there's hope I mean, this time last, you know, we weren't aware of it this time last year, but, you know, March and April, it was quite dark. We didn't know where we, we were at Headless Chickens. Whereas I feel there is something, there's positivity, you know, things, amazing scientific things have happened, you know, it, and we should start to appreciate that, you know, the small things, I'm, I'm sitting at home making scrubs, you know, that's that's my new thing. I'm making scrubs for the vaccination centers. You know the the uniforms that they wear. So, you know, I could find better things to do with my time, more selfish things to do with my time. But to me, that's just something that makes me happy. And you know, and and I had I had I think I had a similar issue with where I was telling you before Christmas that um, I have a sister who's very estranged and very negative very very negative and very um it's very hard to make her realize that she's living in the past and she's got to come out of that bitterness and that that past and draw a line under it and begin to live because if we don't live and if we don't look forward and if we don't like you say let these moments go through us then what's the point what why are we here yeah, exactly. Why are we here? And the, the true answer, we don't know. <laughs> true. <laughs> yeah, and unless we face this, I don't know. We will be suffering unnecessarily. We don't know why we're here. This is the truth. We can imagine all kinds of answers, waiting for good news, which will fulfill us or not. But appreciation of the current moment is even appreciation of the glass of water of the of this moment that we are speaking we are looking into each other's faces mm -hmm. we are seeing ourselves and others yeah and this is the appreciation the even not for purpose because yeah you look on existence yeah you look on the flowers, yeah, or you look on the clouds. What purpose does it have? Yeah, ask a cloud, what purpose? What purpose we can ask, I can ask myself, what purpose, why I am here? And the true answer, I don't know. Whatever I say will be just avoidance of this truth. Avoidance of this emptiness, which opens when you surrender to not knowing. And the truth is, 
God knows what can happen next moment. Who knows? We all saw what happened with this pandemic, right? Who expected this, such a change of life? And people say, we want to go back to normal, but there is no going back. And this is a scary thing. There is no going back. Never. Never there is going back. It's never the same. This is the whole nature of this world is just constant change. Even before your mind has a chance to blink, it's already changed. Your body is changing every moment. In seven years, there are no one cell which was seven years ago. It's completely new body. So this kind of appreciation, not running away, telling the truth, you see? But even in spiritual circles, it's very, it's, it's the same mind pattern, you know, running away to something which will save us. But to me, real spirituality is not separate from what it is now. And what is now? I, you know, somebody, I might need to go to the toilet and this is the truth. And this is what is important at this very moment. And we all know how it is important when you are in the middle of the city and you want to go to the toilet and there is no public toilet. And this is the truth. This is the spirituality. Vigilance is keeping aware of what enters the mind house. Do not fight with the arising thoughts, but simply watch them. Do not disturb your mind and do not divide it. But even this watching is through mind. So then strike at the root of the illusion by the inquiring, by inquiring who is watching the thoughts. Otherwise, a do doer survives as a watcher, and this is mind. In the same way, wanting to kill the mind just creates a killer, which can only, which can be only effort and movement, only mind itself. You cannot find and kill the mind. It is ten-headed demon. Chop off a head and another will grow back because I am bound and I am free I exactly the same trap. Only the desire for freedom will help you because you are what you think. Think to destroy the mind and mind is a destroyer, not destroyed. Think only of freedom and you are freedom. So simply keep quiet, simply keep quiet, simply keep quiet and make no effort. Don't even make the effort to carry the burden of the I thought. Just thought I'll share this with you because this is exactly yeah the, the point of, and this is a trap where many people on spiritual search fall. That they start to think that this is right and this is wrong. And when you believe these thoughts, you are in the in the illusion of the duality, yeah, illusion of mind position, illusion of opinion. You don't see things as they are. You're in the process of identification with the judgment. And judgment is a characteristic of the mind. Mm -hmm. 
and to see things clearly as they are, there is no other way but letting go of the mind. And this is not the act of doing. Yeah. So when we say, for example, that somebody, for example, is attached to the past, we are living in the past. So even to judge this is also an illusion. This is what I'm saying. This is an illusion as well. The person who is living in the past, living in the illusion. But my judgment about this, that the person is living in the past is also an illusion. Because how can one live in the past? You try. Can you try now to be in the past? Can you try to be not here and now? You cannot. It's impossible. Whatever mind says. And this is what is said by that everybody is already, already awake. Just don't recognize it. Everybody is already living in the truth. Everybody is enlightened. Everybody is a manifestation of this one consciousness which penetrates all. It is the same self. Same self looking through these eyes, that eyes. That's really very difficult to, for me at the moment, you know, it's it very is. difficult for me. To, to it get is difficult. Around. It is difficult because it is so simple. Some one, one master once says that if it was a bit complicated, mind would understand it. Mm. It's so simple. It's profoundly simple and absolutely available to everyone, irrespective of deservability, irrespective of race, irrespective of past. But is it that they have to want it? it or see it? If you want it, if you want it, you go too far. Okay, I, uh, that's why I changed. But you, but, 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 but you see, if you don't want it, you don't have it. But if you want it, you don't have it either. <laughs> um, but there's that, that but thing you see, of it has, it has nothing to do with you. It's to do with it. You can let it to have you. This is all you can do. But we try to organize the truth. We, find, we try to play with it. Oh, I know the truth. Yeah, I put it in my pocket. Now, mind has no grasp on it. And the first illusion, obviously, is the thought I. Find that which is before the thought I. And you abide in the truth. And yes, mind cannot grasp it. This is why while we search for it, we cannot find it. But if we don't search, we also cannot find it. We must search. But at the end, the search should stop. Stop so profoundly that that which is searching is no more. And we, as humans, we have this capability of observation, of being vigilant, of what is passing through the screen of our consciousness. So we can see a thought is passing. But even noticing the thought is also a thought. 
And this also needs to be recognized. Emotion passes through the body and suddenly rejection comes of the emotion or acceptance of positive emotion. We can be vigilant in all of that. And this vigilance is the presence itself. It's not a thing that you can have, that mind, ego can have. No, impossible. But we are lucky that we are not the mind and not the ego. Ego and mind are just other thoughts, notions. The truth cannot be spoken. You know, the Tao De Ching, Tao De Ching of Lao Tzu starts with the truth that can be spoken is not the eternal truth or the name that can be spoken is not the eternal name. So when you see these thoughts appearing in something huge, you see yourself appearing in that huge consciousness, which penetrates everything. See, I don't mean by your eyes, but by your very presence, you are that. then your acts are driven not from running away from the fear of ego loss or body loss or identification loss. Your acts coming from that. That is driving. And that is who you are. But the problem with the mind, if you say, this is who you are, it will start believe, oh, I am there. Yeah, and this is a false. This is the false arrogance of the mind. The time of importance. Definitely, you are of huge importance. Definitely, you are of immeasurable importance. But it's not the same importance what mind says when he says I'm important. If you just allow this immeasurable importance of your own self to have your mind, Actually, mind needs to surrender. This is what is said, Papaji said that the only true desire is desire for freedom. So mind starts to so desire the freedom, so desire to meet the beloved, that he or she, I don't know, mind is he or she, that it just ready to surrender, ready to bow before the truth and just open, open to it. Whatever it takes, honestly, what we have to lose, what we have to lose, but we are so defending this un fake eye, we are so defending it. We are afraid to stand naked, nakedly. Yeah, I mean openly, open heartedly. We are all the time defending something from the bad news, from other people. We stand in front of somebody, we feel the separateness and we are protecting from that. 
But there is a possibility to open to all of that. To open. Obviously, if you need to take care of your life, you take care. And there are moments of danger when you need to act according to your instincts. Nothing wrong with it. Yeah? You protect what needs to be protected and run away from immediate danger. If you're hungry, you go and eat. But this is the Tao, that when you're hungry, you go and eat and you appreciate it. Oh my God, I sit at the table and I hold the tomato and I'm eating the self itself. Yeah, look around you. You're surrounded by consciousness everywhere. By huge intelligence, it just penetrates and permeates everything. You know, galaxies meet and collide. Yeah, planets are destroyed in the cosmos. And and we are so holding to this human importance of I. But this I is very temporary. And to find that which is not temporary, this I needs to be surrendered. And better during this lifetime. This lifetime is a, an opportunity. It's a chance. Oh my God, people don't see it. This is such a chance to recognize that, to recognize who you truly are beyond the movie, which, we so, which is so precious to us. I agree, the movie is so precious. It's full of love. It's full of pain as well. It's full of whatsoever. It's just full, full of its own presence, of life itself. So who am I in all of that? Am I this body-mind which will disappear so fast? With all my problems, or belief, if I have problems, they will disappear with my disappearance of this body-mind. Look on these pictures on the internet from 200 years ago, 100 years ago. These were real people living through their lives, going to work, going to fulfill their desires, establishing families. Yeah. So many problems to resolve. I don't, I don't make these problems non-existent. But I'm just saying that what is the real importance? Where is this real importance? In uh, mind opinions? I'm, I'm not sure. Because when you surrender the mind to the heart, oh, you, what you find is real love. What you're looking for, you will find real fulfillment. You find peace and joy, which are here no matter what. And this is what I, I find that many people discovered it in different circumstances, you see, even in, in war camps, yeah. In Gangaji does a tremendous work already for many years. It's called Freedom Inside. 
she goes to prisons to speak to people even that have life sentences. Life sentences which cannot be even revoked for difficult, very difficult crimes. And these people discover the same truth, discover the same peace and joy. It's not a matter of deservability. It's not a matter of, of how I look or how I behave. It's not a matter of that. It just, if you wish, I'll say this, so I'm sure I will be misinterpreted, but God, the God didn't make us separate from him. We are him. We are her. Can you really bear, 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 yeah, this intimacy with yourself? Or intimacy with the other? Even without saying a word. Real intimacy. So, you know, when enlightenment, awakening is finding nothing. And in this nothing, you find everything. But this everything is not what you could even expect to find. And it needs to be found again and again and again every moment afresh. Otherwise, it's just the past. It's just a memory of an experience. Hmm. And it's not separate from anything. This is why I told that any human desire is included in this. Everything is included. Nothing is superior or how I say in, in, inferior, opposite of superior, inferior. Nothing is like that. It's just mind labelings. So when you see a worm or a caterpillar in the grass, yeah, or you see a butterfly. It's not inferior. It's not superior. It's just your own self. You see yourself. What are you laughing of, Pam? Such a beautiful laughter. You don't want to. <laughs> now thinking about worms and caterpillars and butterflies I think and I was thinking I'd rather be a butterfly <laughs> but, but that's not the point is it <laughs> yeah and yeah we, we, we want to be beautiful it's, it's, it's natural 
want to be what we prefer. But at the end, our bodies are perfect food for them. Yes, and, and my one of my sisters, Vicky, um, we were having a conversation about death and asking whether we want to be buried or cremated. And uh, she wanted to be buried, but then she said, but I don't want the worms to get me. And I said, oh, Vicky, for goodness sake, you won't know. And she said, but I don't like the thought of it. Can you wrap me in bako foil before you put me in the coffin? <laughs> so I'm wrapping her in bako foil before I put her in the coffin. <laughs> oh, <my God>. oh, dear. <laughs> Uh, so uh, I know I know my mind is is we're not supposed to fight our mind, Dimitri, and that's what my mind was doing at the time that you were mentioning it. Sure, sure, it's the nature yeah. of the mind. I fully understand it. Yeah. So that's so, important that when you listen, yeah, allow your mind to speak whatsoever. Yeah. Listen with your heart. When you listen with your heart, then something happens beyond words you know what i'll read you something something else if, if i find it now no oh, here it is yeah i have it it's from chuan tezu that was such an enlightened master as well after he was we can say follower of lao tzu but it was long ago. Anyway, this is what he said. The fish trap exists because of the fish. Once you've gotten the fish, you can forget the trap. The rabbit snare exists because of the rabbit. Once you've gotten the rabbit, you can forget the snare. Words exist because of meaning. Once you've gotten the meaning, you can forget the words. Where can I find a man? Where can I find a man who has forgotten words so I can have a word with him? <laughs> 